To begin the analysis, we're going to want to convert the area from centimeters squared into meters squared. Perhaps we all know that one meter is equivalent to 100 centimeters, but because we're trying to cancel out centimeters squared, we actually have to square our conversion factor. So you'll pick up your calculator and you'll do 100 multiplied by 1 over 100 squared. When you do that, you would get an area of 0 0.01 meters squared. Next, we understand that there is a dielectric material between the plates of this parallel plate capacitor. That dielectric material is symbolized by this orange rectangle. And to determine the kappa, or the dielectric constant, we have to use Gauss's law with a dielectric. So we can see Gauss's law is written as epsilon naught times an integral of kappa times the electric field dot product with the area vector. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. And this will equal Q. Q is the amount of free charge on the plate. If you look at this picture carefully, you can see that this blue rectangle, which is the positive plate, has a certain amount of positive charge on it. And that is considered to be the free charge. So that actually was given in the question. We'll be referring back to it shortly. Now we have to evaluate this integral here. And of course, kappa being a dielectric constant can be factored out of the integral. So now we have kappa times epsilon naught times the integral. A dot product, EDA, can be rewritten as EDA times the cosine of an angle. Now let's talk about that angle. We can see from our picture here that the electric field would be pointing from the positive plate towards the negative plate. So in other words, the electric field would be pointing straight down. A DA vector, known as an area vector, always points away from the surface. So if we look at the positive plate here, at the surface of the positive plate right there, we would point an area vector away from that surface. So that we could label as DA. And hopefully you can see that since both vectors are pointing downward, the angle between them is zero degrees. And of course the cosine of zero degrees is just one. So we actually don't need this term anymore. Furthermore, the electric field between two plates of a parallel plate capacitor is a constant value. So we can actually factor out the E as well because it is constant. So now we're just left with the integral of dA. And of course, from calculus, the integral of dA is just area. So that's going to represent the surface area of that positive plate. So our final expression will be E times kappa times epsilon naught times area is equal to the free charge Q. Now we're trying to solve for kappa, so it's going to be useful to divide both sides of this equation by the quantity E epsilon naught A. When we do that, the electric field, epsilon, and area cancel on the uh, left-hand side of the equation. So now we have our dielectric constant kappa equal to the free charge divided by electric field times epsilon naught times area. And now all we have to do is plug in the known values. So the charge was given as 8.9 times 10 to the minus 7 coulombs. The electric field strength was given in the question as 1.4 times 10 to the 6th. You'll notice that that was given in the standard unit of volts per meter, so you do not have to convert that. Next is epsilon naught, that's a constant, it has a known value. It's 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter, and then again times the area which we converted earlier into 0 0.01 meters squared. So let's punch this into our calculators. And when we do so, we can see that kappa is equal to approximately 7.2. So this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. We now move on to part B of the question, which asks us to determine the magnitude of the charge induced on each dielectric surface. Now we can see that we have that dielectric material colored in orange. The upper plate is positive, and what that does is it pulls electrons towards it, and so you get this accumulation of negative charge near that upper positive plate. That negative charge is known as the induced charge, and it is symbolized by Q prime, 
there's a negative sign in front of it because that induced charge is negative up here. The corresponding amount of charge but positive is down below on the sort of lower surface of the dielectric material. Now the book goes through a derivation using Gauss's law and they arrive at this expression which involves Q prime. That is what we are looking for in this question. So what we're going to do is solve this equation for Q prime. Perhaps we can begin to do that by subtracting Q from both sides of the equation. So we would have negative Q prime is equal to Q over kappa minus Q. We would then divide both sides of the equation by negative 1. Make sure you divide each term by negative 1. So now you have Q prime equals negative Q over kappa plus Q. And I w if we wish, we can factor out a Q here just to simplify it a little bit. So then we would be left with negative one over kappa plus one. And so all we have to do now is plug in the kappa, which we found in part A, that was the dielectric constant, and then Q, which was the amount of free charge on each plate. And we recall that Q, the amount of free charge on each plate was 8.9 times 10 to the minus seven. And that's in coulombs. And then kappa we determined as 7.2. So let's plug this into our calculators, and this should get us the correct answer to part B. We end up with 7.66 times 10 to the minus 7, and that would come out to be in coulombs. And that would indeed be the correct answer to the question.